up, Jay? What are we doing today? We are fixing my rotors. When you're coming to a stop and you're slowing down and it starts going vroom, 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 slowly moving forward, normally that means that the rotor itself has warped. And so I'll show you how to test out whether it's warped or not. I've got the car lifted, I've got the e-brake off, which doesn't really matter for the front on this, but I'm gonna spin it. And you just wanna listen for whether or not the brake caliper is gripping onto the rotor at like random times. So I'm just gonna spin this one. Seems to be pretty constant. Maybe it's this one's a little off, but that might not be the one that we're looking for. So I wanna see how this one's going, right? Ready? See that one more time. Yeah. So you could hear that one, right? Oh yeah. Basically what's happening is because the rotor isn't straight, and it's a little bit warped out, it's gripping onto the caliper and stopping it. Replacing rotors, you wanna make sure that if you're gonna be replacing one of the front ones, you're replacing both of the front ones. And if you're replacing one of the rear, you're gonna be replacing both of the rear. The reason being that you want your brakes to be even, and especially even in the front and even in the back. Another thing that you wanna keep in mind is that because this rotor's warped, this brake pad has been wearing uneven for a while now. And so we're gonna have to replace not only the rotors, but we're gonna have to replace the brake pads too. So I'll show you what we got. Cool. Selecting your brakes and rotors, they've got lots of options. You can get drilled, slotted, and vented and everything. Always go with vented. And in my opinion, which is supported by statistics and engineering, never get drilled ever every time that i look at lamborghinis and porsches and everything like that you got these beautiful drilled and slotted rotors but when you drill a rotor it actually takes away from the reliability and the likelihood of a catastrophic failure is actually much higher so you can kind of laugh when you see them spending their extra 400 dollars. i ended up going with centric parts i got these ones already painted for me Getting rotors that are already painted uh, like these are in the center and on the outside prevents the rust and so it's actually really good to go with that. If you can come around here, what we're looking to do is take this entire caliper off. And so in order to do so, there are two bolts right here and right here that keep this thing connected. You're gonna to wanna to have a bungee cord because when this caliper comes off, it's super heavy. And the only thing attaching it really are, uh, well, is the brake line. Yeah. And that brake line is not meant to support this heavy ass caliper. I got my breaker bar and ratchet. I seem to be all right for right now, but if you need more room, you can always turn your wheels and it'll give way more room for access to these bolts. When you're removing this caliper, there's nothing actually keeping this rotor still. You just take one of the lug nuts, put it on, and it'll hold it in place. holding the caliper because this thing is ready to fall. This is the wheel hub assembly that I uh, put on a year ago and it's already rusting up. I got a wire brush and I'm just gonna scrape this up. Get a lot of this uh, rust 
off and level it out a little bit so that the rotor will meet up with a flat surface. So it's not gonna get perfect unless you grind it and sand it. And... It's gonna happen again, but to make it easier to take the rotor off the next time, I'm gonna take some copper slip and I'm just gonna put it on the outside. When you get your rotors, they come with a layer of grease on it, or you know, oil, grease, something like that. Oil. It basically makes it so that it won't rust while it's in the packaging and everything. You have to remove that before putting it on there if you want to have the correct grip with your brakes. To remove that layer of oil or grease or whatever, use brake cleaner. You can buy this anywhere, AutoZone, probably even Kmart. Okay. And so that's what we're going to be using to clean this off. Now, most videos that you see, they're going to take the brake cleaner and they're just going to spray the crap out of it, right? And you can totally do that. But I don't actually want to get any of this on the paint. It'll eat right through it. So I got my paper towel and I've got my brake cleaner. And to make sure that it doesn't get on any of the paint, I'm just going to spray it onto the paper towel. Woo! Comes out fast. And now I'm just going to go around the outside on the metal and take off that layer of Right. Yeah, make sure to do it on both sides. Yeah, there you go. Get her nice and wet. Next, we need to swap out the brake pads for new ones. Yay. Yeah. We're going to take the brake pads out of the caliper and then put the assembly back on and then remove the caliper, reset the caliper, and then put the brakes back in. And I'll show you how, what we're talking about, all right? So first, if you look in here, I've got my pad. I'm just going to take this out. Pads are like brand new. This is such a mmm. It's at my soul right now. <laughs> All right. Now I'm just gonna put this back on. And these bolts need to be tightened 110 to 112 foot pounds. So probably 111. This is the fanciest torque bar I've ever seen. It's got like numbers and shit. So uh, let me fuck this up. Bingo. So right now I'm just gonna take off the caliper pin and uh, this should tilt right up and we should be able to reset this and do all the brakes and everything. This. Shouldn't be torqued too much. If it was torqued a lot, then whatever mechanic or whoever worked on it before, hit it with an impact gun and never hit that with an impact gun because it will destroy the caliber. All right, so I got that. And then this just tilts right up. Cool. When you get new brake pads, they should come with these little metal clip things and it basically has little prongs that keep the pads in place and stuff like that. And because I got new ones, I'm just going to install them. Sounds good, right? Yeah. yeah. Take these other ones out. Alright. 
should just clip right in. Yeah. It should be all be the same. They do actually differ from top and the bottom, so do make sure that you're doing that. So next, because the pistons are already compressed, we need to push them back into their little sockets and we're going to need a tool for that. It's a bunch of fancy smashy ways that people compress these pistons. I'm going to show you a kind of ghetto way because I feel like you guys might be able to get your hands on a couple C-clamps. I've got two of them because I've got two pistons to compress and what I want to do is I want to put pressure on one side of the caliper and then pressure on the other side on the piston and then when I compress it, it's going to push the piston back into the caliper. In. I've got my other one. Come over. No. All right. Cool. Ooh, wait. They're both in. So now that those are compressed. One really good thing to service when you're going through and actually servicing your pads and your brakes and everything are these pins. Your calipers come with these pins. They pop out, and they've got this grease in it. Now, you never want to make the mistake of putting the wrong type of grease on it. So what you want is brake and caliper grease and go with the synthetic, always the synthetic, and then you won't get in any trouble. Most greases, what they'll do is end up reacting with the rubber uh, that you have right here, and then it eats it up, kills it, and then the whole thing's screwed. So you just want to make sure that it's always synthetic. So in order to clean the pins, you just want to pull the rubber off. Take the old gunk off. When you're doing this, always check for rust, because that will absolutely destroy a caliper. Put this back on. Alright, just coat it. And you don't want to be stingy with this stuff. It's not expensive. You use it like four times a year maybe. But just make sure that it's all good up. That looks gunky. Mm -hmm. All right, let's put it back together. Make sure that that seal is nice. And then that's all set. I'll put it back now. Pop it on. That's the action that's going to be opening and closing the distance. Next up, we want to be putting the brake pads in. You want to keep in mind that these two little prongs up there, there's, there's a little piece of spring metal that actually goes in these and makes sure that it's going to stay there. But the back of the pad should apply a little bit of the grease to prevent squeaking and, and you know the, the pistons are actually going to be pushing on this itself. So just a little bit there. A little bit there, not too, too much, and a little bit on the end so that it can slide. Don't get any on the pads, you do want to stop. <laughs> now we're just going to take these seat clamps off. So then you just take the pad, and set up, once it's done. <laughs> Make sure to get it in the groove. Push it on in. These are the little spring metals that I was talking about. Let's push this on up. All right. Yep. So that's one side. And the other side. All right. It's in. And this clip. And then so this flap from here. All right. Make sure that that goes very well. Little bolt right here. In order to tighten this bolt, we need to have a 17 millimeter wrench and a 14 millimeter socket. Just put the wrench up here on the pin to make sure that it's gonna stay still. And then and tighten this up. 
cool. Yeah. You really don't want to go too yeah. crazy on it. All right, so uh, that's how to do one side. Make sure to do both sides. I'm gonna do the other side now, and that's how to do rotors. And pads. Oh, and pads. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Mills Garage. If you like these videos, don't forget to click below. And we have a bunch more content coming up, so click to subscribe and we'll see you next week.